Good morning, folks, or good afternoon, or whenever you may be watching this, our third Sunday in our Advent is a sermon for December 13th. And uh, as you can see, I'm not in the sanctuary. I uh, We have come to, I like to use slides. So we like to use slides, Pastor Raleigh and I, and uh, a lot of times it adds to uh, to have an illustration, a visual illustration adds to what we're saying. And so I thought uh, to try to incorporate slides with our sermon here this morning. And that's what I'm uh, going to do. And that's why I'm not in the sanctuary in my house and using um, a Zoom function to be able to do that. So you should be able to see me and you should be able to see my slides. And so... Uh, this week's sermon is titled Restoration. Reality TV has been popular for many years, anywhere from dating shows to um, cooking shows to house renovation shows. And I'm not sure if you <laughs> have a favorite house renovation show or not. Uh, we have ours. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second. The house renovation shows have come a long ways. I remember as a kid watching This Old House with Bob Vila, a, a PBS, um, but they've come a long ways. And one of the shows that sort of set the standard was Extreme Makeover Home Edition. And as they set that standard, a lot of different shows have been added uh, to our viewing pleasure from Property Brothers to Flip and flop, flip or flop, maybe it is flip, flip and flop, uh, love it or list it, buying blind is another TV show, I have not seen that one, I've seen bits and pieces actually of the all the other ones, and then actually this is our favorite, no longer running, but we tend to watch the reruns, Fixer Upper, uh, interestingly enough, Joanna Gaines, I saw on Target, she's got a whole display, and um, uh, so, from TV show to uh, this entrepreneur. What these shows have in common is that they turn something that is ugly or out of date or not usable into something that is beautiful, uh, something that then is up to date and something that would be very functional. And often you have these before and after, um, and that's the whole point of the show. And here are some pictures. The before pictures is above and taking the after some work, after you can tell it's the same house, but it looks a lot different. Here's another one before and after. You probably may, I may not have guessed that this was the same house, that the picture below is the same house as the, as the one above. Here's a renovation of a kitchen. And, and it's a funny thing, as I watch these shows, I often think, oh, what's wrong with the before? <laughs> That's very <laughs> usable. and works for me, uh, but certainly the after like that is a lot better and uh, pretty stunning. And then sometimes it, it's really noticeable, you know, very unusable, unsafe space that becomes quite elegant and uh, you wouldn't even think twice about which one you'd rather have. There's a complete restoration. You can see that. You can see a complete restoration here in this picture. The baby that we celebrate at Christmas time and are eagerly anticipating is a baby that brings restoration. We saw this in all of our readings, um, and if you were able to read uh, based on the email, the weekly connection that went out this morning or earlier this week, I would encourage you to do so. Um, but one of them was Psalm 126, and here's part of verse one, and then also um, verse, part of verse four. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Verse four, restore our fortunes, O Lord. Now Jesus um, isn't coming to restore the fortunes for people, but what we see Jesus restoring is the human heart, and Jesus restores all of creation. And this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with Jesus restoring human creation. And there's a number of different creation stories actually in Genesis. 
And at the end of Genesis 1, verse 31 ends with, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. The created world and everything in it was not just very good, it was perfect. There was no flaw, no sin, no hatred, no evil, no decay, no death. God's perfect plan resulted in perfect existence. Humans walked and talked with God. There was no separation. We could be in the same space as God could be. We didn't feel any guilt or shame. God had no reason to discipline or punish or judge humans. Adam and Eve naturally did what God wanted them to do. Until they were tempted to do something different. They were tempted by the serpent. When they were tempted by the serpent, then they succumbed to that temptation. Sin entered the world. And ever since that time, creation has been in a sin state, which has not only affected our relationship with God, causing the separation, but it also has affected the whole created world. Romans 8 puts it this way. For the creation waits in eager expectations for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. <clears throat> we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up until this present time. Creation has been subjected, this verse says, tell us, Creation has been subjected to frustration, and it's been in bondage to decay. Anyone that uh, knows, um, well, anyone that has a garden, or whether it's a vegetable garden or a, veg or a flower garden, knows what decay <laughs> looks like. Uh, even without that, anytime you buy fruit or vegetables at a store and have it in the kitchen in the summertime, we are very sensitive to um, decay coming. Thank you. Thank goodness we have refrigeration, but even then, sometimes it can't be stopped. At the end of the season, all the plants or the flowers are going to deteriorate. There's going to be a, a, a progressive decline. There's a loss of health, vibrancy. They begin to decompose. This is what happens to these vegetables, fruits, plants, flowers. There's a point um, that if a person wasn't going to pick and eat the vegetable or fruit that they may be growing, that it becomes unedible. And it's at that point, like those tomatoes that are on the right, is at that point that we would either throw it away or bury it back into the ground. This current state of sin that we that creation is in, it isn't, it isn't where we started, and it isn't where we are going to stay. We see uh, promises from God for a new creation. Revelations 21 uh, puts it this way. I'm going to read the first five verses. This has just parts of the verse, three verses. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there is no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a beautiful bride dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God dwelling, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. He will be, they will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who has seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. When I read that, I say, sign me up. <laughs> sign me up. Let me be a part of the existence where there is no more death or crying or pain, where everything is made new, where God's dwelling place is amongst the people. What once was in that perfect created state at the end of Genesis 1, 
what once was is going to be again. Perfection that became imperfection is going to be made perfect once again. There will be restoration. And this is the hope that we have as followers of God. Hope that we become reminded of this time of year as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Looking at our Isaiah 61 passage, I'm not going to read this, but just have it on the screen. As we look at this passage, we can see how uh, not only is there going to be a restoration happening for all of creation that I just talked about, but we can see how we can experience restoration in the here and now. A pattern that Isaiah uses here in this passage is a pattern where he talks about what life gives us and then compares it to what Jesus gives us. Now, while Isaiah didn't really have a concept of Jesus, he knew about a Messiah that was promised. And it wasn't until Jesus' life and his ministry where he quotes this Isaiah 61 um, in, in Luke 4 when he was in the synagogue. And as he uh, finishes this, he says, uh, today this um, has come true for you, saying that he is the one that's going to do these things. So we see in Isaiah 61 that life gives ashes, but Jesus gives us garland, that is a wreath of flowers and leaves. Life gives us mourning, but Jesus gives us gladness. Life gives us a faint spirit, but Jesus gives us a mantle of praise. Life gives us captivity, but Jesus gives us liberty. Life gives us imprisonment, but Jesus gives us release. Life gives us broken hearts, but Jesus binds up our heart. He heals our heart. Life gives us oppression, but Jesus gives us good news. In summary, we can say that life will tear us down, but Jesus will build us up. Life brings destruction, but Jesus brings restoration. The message of Christmas is a message of restoration. All of creation will be restored, and we can experience restoration now in our lives. Jesus was, not, uh, Jesus was born not just for you and for me. Jesus was born to bring restoration to all and to everything. For God so loved the whole world. And so his plan is to restore the whole world. Jesus' ministry of restoration becomes real for us when we experience it for ourselves. The restoration that Jesus provides to each of us is a restoration of the human heart. At the time of creation, the human heart uh, did not need to be restored, as it was in a perfect condition. It was not until sin entered the world <clears throat> that restoration was needed. And it didn't take too terribly long um, after God had created humans to see uh, that this was the need. So in, in, in Genesis 6, 5, we read, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all of the time. And so the human heart <laughs> is, it needs to be restored. A person could reflect back on 2020 and start to list what is wrong with the human condition, looking at the different events, listing each one. Uh, but 2020 isn't really uh, much different than any other year. It just really isn't. We saw violence, disease, hatred, fear, protests, counter-protests, slandering, lies, greed, pride, <laughs> selfishness. Exploitation, manipulation, deceit, pain, anger, illness, and so on and so on. Now, let me also say we also saw love, forgiveness, good deeds, selflessness, kindness, sacrifice, people helping others in need, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so that is to say it was all bad, but certainly it wasn't all good. But the way it works is, is the news uh, knows how 
to get viewers. And the way to get viewers is to tell a story that is dramatic and traumatic, which then means so often that the news is about the not so good side of human nature. And all of these news stories, <laughs> they can point out, you know, what is wrong with, um, with, with society and, and in the world. And, and while they may point out some individual things along the way, I actually think they can be summed up with one statement. The heart of the problem of the human condition is the condition of the human heart. Now that, that isn't mine. I stole it from someone and I, I tried to look it up to give credit, but I, I've heard it a few times and let me say it again. The heart of the problem of the human condition is the condition of the human heart. Again, Genesis 6, 5, God saw that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all of the time. So the solution to the human condition is to restore the human heart. And this can only be accomplished by God through Jesus Christ. There is a great story in Luke 19 that shows us how instant a human heart can change when a person encounters Christ. In Luke 19, we read, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, look, Lord. <laughs> and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek saved lives. Zacchaeus experienced an instant restoration of the heart. The crowds were muttering, Jesus went to stay with a sinner, that is someone who had an obvious dark heart. Tax collectors were known for abusing their power in order to become more wealthy. They abused a system for their own gain, not really caring what the impact was on other people. Because of their position of power, people really had no choice but to follow. But now, with this one encounter with Jesus, Zacchaeus changed. He was going to give away half of his possessions to the poor. And if he had cheated anyone, he said he's going to give back four times the amount. His heart was restored. Jesus knew who Zacchaeus was when he called him down from the tree. And Jesus knew who Zacchaeus was supposed to be. Generous, caring, loving, selfless is God's vision for each person. And it is only when a person's heart is restored that we can become who God has created us to be. These TV shows that restore houses, they don't, they don't actually have to restore the house. Restoring the house isn't the only option that they have. In fact, sometimes we see that the house is, is leveled. They conclude that the house is too far gone, that they can't work with it, that the house is no good. There is more bad than good. The house may be moldy, maybe it's rotten, smells or just dirty. The house itself has no value. In fact, the value is actually the land that it is sitting on. And so, and so the house is level. While a house may lose its value, 
getting to the point where it just needs to be destroyed. That is never true for human beings. No person is ever too far gone for the power of Jesus to restore. As we come into this Christmas season, this is what we celebrate. And in fact, this is what makes Christianity so much different than all the other religions. All of these TV shows that restore houses are basically the same show with just, just slightly a different take. And some would say that all the different religions in the world are, are basically the same thing with just a slightly different take on the path that leads to God. That would be an incomplete understanding of the various religions. Of all the holidays and all of the religions, only one celebrates a baby that is going to bring restoration. May you embrace the restoration that Jesus brings to the world, to your life, and to others this Christmas season. Amen.